Good morning. Uh, thank you for being inviting me here at the last minute. I have to scramble all my le uh, lectures at the last minute. And uh, today's topic is going to be Think Dental When the Latest Medical Therapy Fails. Now, I've known Dr. Cook for about 15 years. And uh, I went to his uh, conference. And uh, I was a little bit skeptical about this concept of energy medicine, but I stuck with it, and I've been learning about the acupuncture and the acupuncture meridian assessment. And I'm going to combine this concept of dental and medical-related problem from the point of medical doctor's point of view. So the topic is going to be energy medicine and dentistry. And I've been in the U.S. Army for 25 years, and uh, there are a lot of misinformation and disinformation in medicine. And a lot of my patients come from Iowa. They drive seven, eight hours. And there's a two common denominator that people come to see me. Why they're not getting better and come to see me? They go to Mayo Clinic and all those major institutions. And one dental problem that was not recognized by Mayo Clinic. And number two, actually, parasite problem. So I'll be talking a little bit about the parasite problem, how it can be directly or indirectly related with the dental problem. And Dr. Krug asked me to put some of his slides, and this is one of his slides. Dr. Tom Stone is his private uh, physician who passed away a few years ago. And Dr. Stone said why he was attending his de uh, Dr. Cook's dental seminar. And his answer made all of us to think, what are we really doing to our patients? Uh, Dr. Stone says, I know you dentists are killing my patients. I just want to find out how you guys are doing it. <laughs> so he really makes sure you, know, you all see this slide, OK? Thank you. <laughs> now let me give you some general statistics. In 1999, they say, Number one cause of death was heart, heart disease and heart attack. Number two, cancer. Number three, stroke. Number four, COPD. And just came up saying medical treatment and these complications, there is over 10,000 deaths. That was in 1999. The following year, saying from the following year, the JAMA published Actually, medical care became the third leading cause of death in the United States. Cause of death, unnecessary surgery, over 12,000 deaths. Medication errors in the hospital, 7,000 deaths. Other errors in the hospital, 20,000 deaths. Nosocomial infections in the hospital, 80,000 deaths. Non-error adverse effects of medication, over 106,000 deaths. Over third leading cause of death after heart attack and uh, cancer is actually medical error itself. I just want you to know that a lot of this medical error comes from, not from doctor's point of view, medical doctor's point of view, is what was damaged was done by the dentist who are trying to figure out and end up killing the patients. And uh, this is from year 2005, from National Vital Statistics Report. Again, number one and number two hasn't changed. The heart disease rate is coming down. The cancer rate is going up. Number three says stroke, but they didn't mention anything about medical treatment as complications as a third leading cause of death. They want to just omit that information. And if you look at on number six is a Alzheimer's disease. That was not available 10 years ago. The statistic was not there. Now becoming sixth leading cause of death, and the rate is rising very rapidly right now. It will become number two or number three cause of death in the next 20 years. So if you don't remember what I said tomorrow, thinking you might be on your way to have Alzheimer's disease, <laughs> especially you as a dentist. If you don't remember what I said after today, you might be already halfway there. So. <laughs> now, this is Dr. Cook. He's, after Dr. Stone passed away, I've been taking care of him for the last few years. And, uh, he called me this January, complaining about chest pain. He said he cannot breathe. He's 70 years old. And he was in a dog hunting, and I told him, why don't you fly in? Let me evaluate you. And the old physical exam, EKG lab test, fine. When I checked for 
electrodermal screening test, which is another name for EAB and acupuncture meridian assessment. I saw major problem on dental problem and on gallbladder meridian. I picked up parasite problem along the gallbladder meridian and dental infection. And I actually saw him a few times in the last several years, and every time I see him, I'm picking up always dental problem, dental infections. And uh, a premium parasite medication uh, to open up his gallbladder meridian, and he said he felt breathing a little bit easier to breathe, but never went away. And I told him, you need to see dentists get that infection to be cleared up. And you know, he practiced by himself in Wisconsin out of Norway, and it was not done. And a few weeks later, he couldn't tolerate his chest pain, couldn't breathe, ended up going to the hospital, and uh, he ended up having a stent place. I just talked to him last night. He's doing fine, no chest pain. And uh, I just want you to know that he's doing very well. The review of system, going back, why he got sick. He had a chronic infection of all wisdom tooth when he was 16 years old. His father was also a dentist, and that was not corrected until he was in mid-50s. There's a 30 years of chronic infection before he had these problems. And the last two, three years I saw him, he had this dental infections, what happened was he had one tooth removed and uh, the root tip was still in the, in the jaw. And I was keep looking at it as I'm seeing and actually the x-ray is showing that it is a root tip and it was not corrected. And I'll go a little bit about this case later on. Now this is a real statistics. Two out of, or one out of two men will develop cancer during their lifetime, and one out of three women will develop cancer during their lifetime. Now, this is a real statistic. That means some of you already have cancer right now and under care right now, and some of them will get cancer, and you don't even know you have it. This is more than epidemic. One out of two men and one out of three women will develop cancer during their lifetime. And these are some of the risk factors I assess and treat my patients. And I always look to my patients for nutrition and diet. And we're going to have a lecture on nutrition and diet. I'm not going to spend my time. And I always look for vaccination, insecticide, preservatives, medication, chemical stress, surgical scars, parasite, hidden dental problems, knee infections and toxins, psychological stress, heavy metal pollutions, acidosis, electromagnetic fields, allergies, and miasmatic and constitution. Miasmatic means if your aunt had a breast cancer, your sister had a breast cancer, your mother had a breast cancer, there is a certain constitution you're going to develop breast cancer. Among those, I really emphasize on nutrition and diet, parasite, hidden dental problems, heavy metal pollutions, and allergy problem. If you can take care of those five, a lot of time people just get well. There's a, what I call spontaneous healing or accidental cure. Your body will begin to heal on its own. So let's get into acupuncture, because I'm going to get into acupuncture and acupuncture meridian assessment. This is the beginning of early acupuncture. There's a lot of misconceptions about acupuncture, and we have actually mapped out all those different meridian systems. This information is two, 3,000 years old. And there's an acupuncture, and there's an acupuncture meridian assessment. There's a totally different entity of its own. Dr. Reinhold Wall, he developed this called electroacupuncture according to Dr. Wall. I like to call it acupuncture meridian assessment. I think that's a correct term. Or you can call it electrodermal screening test. They help me to guide through what's wrong with my patient. So if you're looking at a clinical picture of the typical functionally disturbed modern patients, they complain about chronic fatigue and pain and diagnosis of the fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue syndrome, hypoglycemia, allergies, frequent infections, digest problems, 
leaky gut with fungal infections and parasite infections, poor concentrations, insomnia, anxiety, depressive tendencies, vague headache, muscle or back problems, and often without clinical diagnosis. This is what drives people crazy. They go every known test, go to every institution, go to Mayo Clinic and Cleveland Clinic, Diamond uh, Headache Clinic, and etc., without any definite diagnosis. Where do I get the biggest information? The hidden problem, dental and parasite problem, and how do I get the information? By measuring acupuncture point, acupuncture meridian assessment. But we, let's talk about some concept of why we get sick. Concept of homotoxicology. Dr. Hans Ragwick talks about from Germany. And he divided into six different phases of a disease. First three is called excretion phase, <coughs> reaction phase, and deposition phase, which he regarded as a called humoral phase. And the last three phases called impregnation phase, degeneration phase, and neoplasm phase as a cellular phase. So if you catch a cold, running, you're going to have a runny nose, cough, that's uh, part of the normal excretion phase, normal physiologic response to get rid of toxins and infections. When the infection gets a little more serious, you're going to have a fever of 103, 104. That's how your body mobilizes your white blood cell to fight infections. When the infection gets a little more serious, you're going to have a swollen tonsils and swollen lymph node. That's the position phase. Those are all normal physiologic response for your body to fight it up. But what do we do as a physician? Actually, what do we do, uh, what the patient demands? So my Johnny got sick with an earache and cold and runny nose and cough, and they demand antibiotics. If you don't give them antibiotics, they'll find another doctor who will give antibiotics. They give them either Tylenol, and all those cough syrups and all those medications to suppress their symptoms. You go through that phase over and over, and what, what's happening, you're blocking your normal physiological response. You're pushing your body into what we call uh, impregnation phase, degeneration phase, and neoplasm phase, and that's where we see this chronic illness. Even young children are getting cancer, diabetes, obesity. So let's say this patient has uh, dental infections and having a, a swollen gum and pain. So what do you as a dentist do? Give them antibiotics to cool things down and then give them root canal. Five years or 10 years later, depends on the location of the root canal. If it is a man, they may develop prostate cancer. If it's a woman, may develop you know, breast cancer. But it may take five to 10 years and they will not see the connection. And we need to find a better means to detect before you develop problems. And if you're looking at from called matrix and matrix regulation by Dr. Pissinger, this is a cell make who we are. There's the talk about 100 trillion cells living system in our human body. Among those 100 trillion cells, 10 trillion cells are made of human cells 90 trillion cells are actually foreign bodies, foreign cells. And uh, uh, th let's say this is your kidney. Here's your capillary, and there is uh, your nerve system. There are different uh, fibrogens and collagens in here. And this, uh, uh, the dot is what we call ground substance made out of glyco uh, glycoprotein and proteoglycan, consists of what we call matrix. That's your connective tissue. This connective tissue is connected from your head to toes. And those people who does acupuncture understand you can put a needle in your toe, have an instantaneous transmission into your head. The transmission travels faster than your nerve system. This matrix system here, the ground substance, is probably about, what, 90% consists of water. And this water behaves as liquid crystal. They will transmit information at a spontaneous, at, a, at a almost at the speed of the light. And if you look at the uh, your capillary, the blood, you can see that there's no 
connection between the blood and the cells that make the organ system. All those blood tests we do have a limited value because it doesn't represent what's going on at the cell. The most common complaint we have, chronic fatigue. If you do the RA function test, normal T3, normal T4, it's not that you don't have enough thyroid hormone. It's at the cellular level, there's a blocking. And number one common problem, heavy metal, mercury. Because mercury will block the conversion of T4 to T3. So you can do all the blood tests you want, but you'll have give you a limited value. One of the cheapest way to see the, the, the your brown substance is actually clip some of your hair, hair analysis. Measure your calcium, magnesium, sodium, potassium, all those trace minerals. Give very fascinating information. So our body will try to heal itself. And let's talk about these hidden dental problems. What are all those hidden dental problems we are dealing with? You know, you're an expert in amalgams, root canals. I don't know how many people check for galvanic currents. It's a very important part of the pathology. Cavitation, TMJ, implants, heavy metals, bonding materials, metal allergies, composite materials, high-speed drill. Dr. Cook always emphasized use low-speed drill, 20,000 RPM. He's so dogmatic about that. So many people use 300,000 RPM and later on develop this pain, end up getting a root canal. Biological dentistry. I have a several biological dentists in St. Louis. The different degree, different experience, different philosophy. Many times it's not done right. I need to find out whether they got the job done right. It's my responsibility as a medical doctor. Because many times it's not done right. If I, it's not done right, I send to another one, another one, and eventually I end up sending patient to Dr. Cook. And my patient have to drive 10 hours to see Dr. Cook. Proprioception. And I mentioned here parasite. Why do I put parasite? Parasite affects your immune system. It affects your nutritional cells. And also paroxysm. So you can do all those perfect dentistry, re replace your amalgams and root canals and TMGs and whatever. But if the patient has parasite problem, they're going to start grinding at night. It affects proprioception problems, TMJ, and the wound will not heal. The cavitation will not heal. I have one patient had a nine cavit cavitation work and it will not heal until get through the parasite cleansing. And then finally the cavitation started healing again. Is that the parasites in the mouth or the parasites in the gut? Of the gut. But it's not just the gut. Parasites are everywhere. Remember there's a 90 trillion cells in our body. Some of them are foreign aliens. They're actually parasites. You don't want them to be around. So how does that trigger the brushes? You know, I learned that from my patient. He's a Mexican lady. They say when the, those Mexican children, when they get this uh, grinding their tears, the pediatrician, Mexican pediatrician, put them on parasite medication, and the problem goes away. And I'll talk more about the parasite, okay? And the concept of a pleomorphism. The cell do change, depends on your different environment. So, thinking dental when the latest medical dental therapy fails. We need to get into concept of energy medicine, understanding from energy system, not from biochemistry. I know there is a Dr. Hagen over there, but I'm into energetic system, not biochemist is not good enough. So what is energy system? We are a bunch of wavelengths and frequency. I know how we talked about yesterday. I don't want to bore you with these waves and frequency, but here's a wavelength. Here's a water molecule, protein molecule, virus, bacteria, cells, and here's a frequency. 
we are a bunch of actually frequency and waves. And here is a uh, visible light, infrared, ultraviolet light. This is just a light itself. We can divide into from infrared begins red down to your violet and ultraviolet. We can actually measure wavelengths, the frequency and musical note, orchestra pitch. And look at here, uh, yes, we talk about 528, right? 528 is right here between yellow and green at 528. <coughs> You can do color therapy, frequency therapy as a sound, and our body will respond to this wave frequency. Most of us need full spectrum light. Some people may require specific frequency as a light or sound. The reason is our organ system behave and respond to all those colors. Green is associated with gallbladder, green, blue, and blue associated with liver, uh, heart associated with the red, stomach with uh, yellow, yellow, green with spleen. All those different organ systems will respond to color and frequency. And they've done experiment on some of these children. What they have done was the children's behavior. What they did was they a painting bright red and orange colors, and their so behavior is totally uncontrollable. They fight, they don't listen, you know, it's impossible to control these children. But when they paint a room with blue, light blue, these children start behaving, they cooperate to each other, and it's a totally different children. And people may know, oh yeah, it makes kind of sense, except these children are actually blind. These are the blind children still responding to the light and frequency. We'll skip this. Messages from water by Dr. Imoto. And this is a very important slide. This is from uh, Dr. Boyd Haley. He presented this about 15 years ago at the Environmental Medicine. And if you look at here, it says partial list of the nucleotide binding protein inhibited by mercury. All those are nucleotides and the enzymes. And there's inhibition concentration. And if you look at here, the sodium potassium ATPase is the most sensitive to mercury. Sodium potassium ATPase. Our human system, the energy system, run by sodium potassium pump. We spend about 80% of our ATP production from mitochondria to maintain sodium potassium gradients. When the sodium potassium pump is not working, all your energy starts shutting down. It affects your immune system, metabolism, endocrine system, you know, your energy level. So this is one of the most key information. And uh, one of the best ways to detect sodium potassium level and their ratio is actually from simply from hair, not from blood tests. Those people often with low in sodium potassium level often have a toxicity buildup in their body and a lot of time is heavy metal mercury. Now, many of you probably know tooth organ chart developed by Fritz Kramer from Germany. Yeah. One thing of interest, the chronic exercise training causes proliferation of mitochondria in cells. And that may... we'll, get to, we'll get to that. We'll get to that too, yeah. So from Dr. Kramer developed this the dental chart. If you truly understand this chart and helping patients, this is what we call million dollar chart for dentists. Because you can really help patients those incurable patients will get well if you really understand this chart. But this is an absolute loss course for medical doctors because they simply don't understand this. Now this part of the measurement I use, if you look at from hand here, this is a lymphatic system. This is actually the lymphatic system of the jaw and dental bone right here. 
called LY2. Lung meridian, large intestine, your nerve system, uh, pericardium circulation, allergy point. Here's a cellular metabolism, triple hero, heart meridian, and small intestine. Just to give you an idea of the power of this uh, meridian system. I have a one patient with irritable bowel syndrome that I just could not help her. She had I try every known medication and natural therapy will not make her get better. And I don't take any insurance. If I cannot help my patients several visits, they are gone. Then she came back a few years later. She said, you know, my irritable bowel syndrome is gone. I just want to let you know. And I asked her, what, what happened? What, who helped you? She goes, my chiropractor had a dream. And in her dream, she was wearing a ring. The ring she was wearing here is very tight. It was blocking the large intestinal meridian and the nerve system. And they cut the ring off. And then the irritable bowel syndrome went away. Just give you the power of this meridian system, the energy system. You can go through your food. I'll show some few acupuncture points with a picture. Here's a Chinese man. A uh, human, this is probably you know, a few thousand years old information. A human has not evolved too much from the last few thousand years, whether you're Chinese, Indian, American, Caucasians, you know, European, has not changed. And this is your heart meridian here. And you can pick up through your last digit. And one of the signs when you have an angina is your pain in your pinkies, radiating down to your arm in your actual left arm, typically. If you look at it from the dental point, it will be on a tooth number 1, 16, 17, and 32. That's your wisdom tooth. <coughs> and that's setting the tone. If you have a wisdom tooth it's not corrected properly, you may develop pericarditis, heart problem, atrial fibrillation 10, 20, 30 years later. Here's a large intestine. You can measure through your index finger. Uh, here's a meridian traveling through right into your dental and going to below your eyes. It will actually cross, uh, cross to the other side of the face. Uh, from the dental chart, it will be tooth number 4, 5, 12, 13 on your upper tooth, and 18, 19, 30, and 31. <coughs> Gold bladder meridian, tooth 6, 11, uh, 22 and 27, that's from your first, uh, uh, first digit. And it's one of the fascinating uh, meridian system. It will travel along the ankle, a lot of what we call knee problem, sciatic pain, back problems, indigestion, bloating problem, sometimes vaguely they cannot breathe very well, and they'll go through the migraine headache. All those gold blood meridian can, along the, whatever is a block, can create all symptoms of the pain. Dr. Cook had gallbladder has been blocked, prone parasite medication opened up. His gallbladder meridian was breathing a little bit easier, but he was having a lot of chest pain. Ron, did you get the handout for? There's a picture is in my handout, so you can take a look at it. There's a stomach meridian. Uh, travel along the line, the knee, through your... For a woman, I always look at the breast, breast cancer problem, often have a you know, uh, dental-related problem with dental, and the breast is a strong connection there. That's a tooth number 2, 3, 14, 15, and 20, 21, 28, 29. Kidney meridian, tooth 7, 8, 9, 10. 23, 24, 25, and 26. They're also including prostate, also will affect it. So it depends on where the dental problem is, it can affect different part of your body, and it's almost predictable once you can measure the meridian system. It's not as difficult as you may think. I just learned hard way. And uh, not only that, also you have to understand the concept of pleomorphism, Antoine de Charme, Gunter Underline, Gaston Nissen, all talk about different environment creating a different 
many facets of these cells, they will adapt to new environment. A major change going on in your dental when you have a root canal, cavitations, implant, you name it. This is a from called Fiasteria, have a 22 different kind of life cycle. 22 different kind of a life cycle depends on what kind of environment they are in. Uh, there was about well, 10 years ago, Chipsaki Bay, there's a lot of problem the people are getting sick, and that's from this called Fiasteria. And we can see the blood in a dark field. Most of these chronically ill patients tend to have a clumping red blood cells, have a heavy rule of formations, and high in fibrin activities. So I'm going to get into some case studies. Here's a 50-year lady with asthma for the last four or five years. She had a life-threatening asthma, go in and out of the hospital. One time she was actually, she died and came in a way to bury it back to life. And our sister was about 15 years ago getting into this concept of energy medicine and understanding biological uh, medical complex problems. And I told her, you know, I've been reading about this. Dental can cause so many problems. And did you see any dentist before you got sick with the asthma? And she thought about it. She goes, you know, I had a root canal when I was about 45 years old. And when I was about 46 years old, I developed this asthma that nobody can control. This connection was strong. And that was number, number 30. So I told them, you know, I, t I don't know what to do with you. Why don't you just pull the tooth out and see what happened? And, you know, she thought, are you crazy? I mean, you know, most people cannot conceptually understand that pulling the tooth out for asthma. Uh, and she didn't follow my advice for another year in and out of the hospital. And at the hospital, I said, you know, I really don't know what to do with you. You know, we've been talking about this dental. Why don't you see a dentist and see what happened? Got the dental x-ray done, perfectly normal x-ray. But another dentist, I told him, go ahead and pull the tooth out anyway. When he pulled the tooth out, there's a stench of this infection coming out. And she had to be on antibiotics for three months. After that, she was asthma-free. It's logical, but a lot of people say, how could that be possible? For regular dentists will not comprehend it. But those biological dentists will understand that because they've seen that phenomenon many, many times. But you have to understand the relationship with the dental medical complex. But those of you who know that, I don't want you to be too cocky because there are so many other phenomena going on. So I'll give some different case studies. There's a 65-year lady from Iowa came with a 35-year history of <coughs> asthma. And uh, for her, I treated her with uh, two different kinds of parasite medications, and her asthma never came back. If you look at the life cycle of the, uh, the parasite, often they'll go to the lung. I have a 39-year-old female from Kansas City with atypical asthma. They don't know what it is, but she cannot breathe. I'm prone two different kinds of, actually three different kinds of parasite medications, and her asthma become free. She actually says she coughed up the actual dead parasite, coughing up. I have a 55-year-old man from Illinois with a frequent pneumonia and bronchiectasis, go to lung specialist from Barnes Hospital, one of the deep best institutions in St. Louis and in the country. Cannot control bronchiectasis. They always treat with antibiotics. Put him on two different kinds of parasite medications. Pneumonia and bronchiectasis never came back. So I just want to let you know that some of the biological dentists can be a little bit cocky. They think they can be a medical doctor just to remind you <laughs> that be humble about the whole process. You know. Thank you. Okay. So here is a. Dr. Cook, this is Dr. Cook's slide. He's going to present this for himself. When he was 56 years old, he had this palpitation problem with the tachycardia. And he says he had a good fortune was with me 
while attending a seminar by Dr. Andrew Landerman. I don't know who that person is. And he became aware of the wisdom tools to the heart relationship, the computerized electrodermal screening uh, test reading of the heart and jaw, uh, the jaw point. His problem was number 32. And uh, his father extracted his tooth when he was 16 years old. It was not healed properly. That set the tone for why he had this heart problem last week. He had this problem for the last 50 years. So here's Dr. Cook. Just want to let, let you know, he's doing what? He did not have a heart attack. He had this uh, unstable angina. He had put the stand place, and he's doing very well. Trying to send to a biological dentist, but he's by himself. He couldn't get the dental work done on time, and he ended up getting his stand placed. This is his angiogram. This is his right coronary artery, where he had put the stand place, and all this plaque was building up. It's an angiogram here. It didn't happen overnight. This is a 50-year process after he removed his wisdom tooth that was not corrected properly. And I'm going to briefly get into diet and nutrition. One half of what we eat keeps us alive. The other half of what we eat keeps the doctors alive. So please, keep on eating. But you have a choice to choose what kind of the other half of the food you're going to eat. That's your personal choice. There's a young man with his uh, complete weight loss. I couldn't actually help him, but he helped himself by putting on raw food diet, eating raw milk, raw eggs, raw chicken, raw lambs, everything raw. And within four months, it builds up from here to there. Four months. And most of my patients, when I treat them, I always look for food allergy problem because I would not give them dietary recommendations without knowing whether they have any hidden allergy problems. And this patient actually is Dr. Cook. I just saw him in January and with a blood test on him. He's highly allergic to tomatoes, lettuce, celery, highly allergic to corn, and there are a few other problems there. So for him, eating tomato or corn or uh, lettuce or celery is like eating poison. So for him, tomato will be a poison. <laughs> this is actually for the scientific American talking about genetically modified the organs and uh, th there's a, a GMO actually but you know it doesn't have to be you know genetically modified if you are highly allergic to the tomato will be poison to you so you need to know what kind of food you are eating I would like give a dietary recommendation without doing food allergy test and uh, I think there's an article in my my handout I was in Bolivia year 2001 as part of the U.S. Army Reserve peacekeeping mission. Guess what their two major problem is? Parasite and dental problem. And the dental problem is a new phenomenon. I think they have a parasite problem from millennium. Now we treat everybody with parental palm oil, the cheapest parasite medication the U.S. government will provide. And sometimes within a day or two days later, people bring in the jar with a parasite. We saw about uh, 10,000 uh, Bolivian Indians in two-week period. Almost everybody was treated with parasite medication. And this is an 82-year-old lady with a, a lot of aches and pain. And if you look at her, her tooth, is not that bad, actually, for somebody who is 83 years old. She probably saw any processed food for most of her uh, adult life. But what we're seeing is these young children with a lot of this aches and pain, acts like an old man or an old woman with a lot of rotting cavities. And I see these children drinking Coke and Pepsi in Andy Mountain. And it's impossible to talk about this you know, nutrition without Parasite, and these are some of the parasite medications I use. 
you have to pick and choose right combination and right dose in right sequence to make the therapy effective. You cannot just give up one medication you expect to get well. Most of the herbal parasite medications are not strong enough by the time they come to see me. I need to use prescribed medication to kill them. They are the true alien in our body that are really taking our life away. So what are the causes of inflammation? Number one and number two killer, either heart attack or cancer. We talk about underlying cause is inflammation. Number one cause, in my opinion, is infection from dental and from your gut. Also environmental toxins, heavy metals and endotoxins, allergens from food, airborne or chemicals, diet from sugar affecting our insulin and hydrogenated oil, diet from starvation, overeating or extreme diet, obesity, stress, and also over-exercise or lack of exercise. And somebody mentioned about the exercise, different degree of exercise. Over-exercise can actually suppress your immune system. Medication, chemo, radiation, smoking, vaccines, and that all will trigger inflammation. So we're going to get into a little more case study here. Here's a Florence from Chicago, 86 year lady came to see me. Chip complaint, squamous cell carcinoma of the tongue diagnosed in December of 1997. Serous post-resective part of the tongue and the cancer came back. If you don't correct the underlying problem, cancer will always come back. Patient in fairly good shape for 86 years old, lots of silver fillings, and uh, she got this uh, cancer coming at the tip of the, her tongue. She, she was on thyroid for, synthroid for hypothyroidism. And uh, treatment plan, I told her to see a dentist, biological dentist in Chicago, to remove those fillings. And they did half side on, and suppose go back one month later to get the, the other side to be removed. And I give her all those homeopathic remedies called Dentox, lymphatic system for chlorella, porphyrogen to get the heavy metal out. There's no IV chelation therapy involved. And when, about a month later, when she's go back to get the, the other side of the dental work to be done, somehow the tumor disappeared. And the OR surgeon said he never in his career saw this tumor will spontaneously disappear. I think it's a heavy metal and also galvanic current that creating cell, you know, like this morph morphosis to look like a cancer and then it regenerates back to normal stage. I have a, another patient. Now, I, you see, I don't want to see this biological dentist get too cocky about this, you know, you can cure cancer patients. About another, about 86 year old lady, recent diagnosed with kidney cancer metastasis to the lung. Prognosis, three months, with a chemo, prognosis with chemo will be probably three months. I said, what's the point of getting chemo if I'm gonna live only three months? And she wants to have a second opinion. I saw her. Multiple meridian disturbance, but her kidney and lung was not actually bad at all, but the problem was coming from the liver, gallbladder from the large intestine. Treat her with triple parasite medication, and she had no symptoms whatsoever. One and a half years later, she's now 88 years old, she's doing fine. So I'm always talking about dental, I this another side too, so don't get too excited for those biological dentists here. We'll, we'll get to the point it as my last slide here. <laughs> Here's a, another case here. Karen, she's a 50-year-old nurse, chip complaint, MS-like symptoms from 1999, dragging her left foot, weakness, electrical vibrational sensation to the legs, body will drop with a sharp pain, uh, so neurologist, MRI, lumbar puncture, all narrative saying you have all those symptoms of MS, but we cannot officially make you as a MS. Well, then she come back next year, we're going to do another MRI, we're going to do another lumbar puncture. By then, I'm sure you're going to have MS. Now, you know, there's no other, you know, 
recommendation. So she doesn't like the idea, came back to see me. She also had a fibromyalgia, uh, chronic fatigue, history of thyroid diatoms. Uh, she had a radioactive iodine therapy. At the UTI, she's been on Cipro, Flagyl, and Diflucan. Physical exam, nine silver fillings, multiple crowns and own layers, uh, and also check for uh, dental galvanic currents. Uh, right, right lower quadrant is 131 millivolts to 7.3 microamperes, and left lower quadrant has over 100 millivolts to 5.7 microamperes. And uh, Oh, by the way, before I forget, the highest number I have seen was 400 millivolts and over 200 microamperes. This is a patient with also another MS patient. Uh, one day filling in and one year later diagnosed with MS. Typical treatment plan, I always do hair analysis looking for the, your soft tissue, for your connective tissue. D, uh, DMPS, heavy metal test, looking for how much heavy metal burden you have. Total body detoxification, gut cleansing, loss of digestive enzyme, zone diet, blood type, O diet for home. And let me give you some of the lab tests. This is a full 54 acupuncture point. Uh, you know, scale from 0 to 100, 50 is considered perfectly tuned, and 45 to 55 is considered normal range. The actual scale is 0 to 5. 100,000 ohms, but they're trying to simplify in a scale of 0 to 100. And there are a lot of abnormal patterns there. They give me a clue where I need to direct my patients. Not diagnosis. I cannot use a diagnosis, but I can use clue where the problem is. This is a hair analysis showing mercury level almost undetectable. Aluminum off the chart. Uh, this is another hair analysis. Her baseline heavy metals, picking up some mercury and nickel. After using a uh, chelating agent DMPS, her mercury level went up from, uh, from 3.7 to 73. There's about a 24 rise in mercury level. And I don't want to say that mercury is the cause of uh, you know, MS, but that's one of the risk factors. Uh, outcome, uh, in two-year period, part of the dental work is done, half was done. Neurologic symptoms almost resolved except when she's tired. She lost 40 pounds on her zone diet and blood type diet. Feeling much better, chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia resolved. And her husband said he got his wife back, and I saw him four times during the time period. Now, what really bothers me is that she only did partial dental work done. She's a nurse. Her husband is a pharmacist, and they could easily, you know, financially afford to get the older dental work done. But they're going to do only a little bit at a time because that's covered by their dental insurance. You know, meanwhile, they, she bought a new car and all those things. But, you know, this is driving me crazy, you know. <laughs> but I'm sure you go through the same problems that people are only going to go so much they're covered by your dental insurance. Now, for another case with the MS or dental related, here is a 27-year-old white female with a newly diagnosed with a MS with a brain lesion in MRI. She came to see me for second opinion. I put on two different kinds of, I think it's only actually one parasite medication, parental palm oil, high dose. She got sick. I told her to tough it up. And three months later, so her primary care physician feeling much better had another MRI, and she said, the brain lesion disappeared. Maybe we made a mistake. You don't have MS. In three months period. So there is a challenging case here for you. Here's a 39-year-old American Mexican man with a newly diagnosed MS, with a vision problems and weakness of his legs, dropping things. MRI consistent with MS. He's got 12 large amalgams. And he had an appointment to see biological dentists to remove the amalgams, but came to see me for a second opinion. 
Now, what would you do as a biological dentist? Well, of course, you're going to remove your silver fillings, right? Yeah, of course, because amalgam has been associated with MS. This particular patient has disturbance in gallbladder meridian and liver meridian and a primum parasite medication, ivermectin and alenium. And, I said, and then he has a second opinion to see neurologists in a major institution to get a second opinion from local hospital. In that six week period, when he see the new neurologists for second opinion, most of his neurologic symptoms went away. And he never actually followed my instruction. He only got about one third of the dose. He never followed my instruction properly. And uh, all those neurologic symptoms are gone. The old records show brain lesion in the brain. So the neurologist said, maybe it's not MS, maybe it's a brain tumor, maybe we're dealing with, maybe let's do another MRI. In that six week period, the lesion disappeared. The treatment, parasite, medication. So I know you heard lecture with Dr. Hagen right there, but MS and amalgam, yes, but also thinking there's other differentials. I want you to keep that in mind. And people are always complaining of how expensive the therapy is. I'm sure you go through the same process. And those people who say who cannot afford to take care of themselves financially, I tell them to do gallbladder, liver flush. Well, you do uh, drinking apple juice, and you'll be drinking olive oil. This is one of the most powerful cleansing programs you're going to go through it. And so many symptoms get better when you go through this gallbladder liver flush. All my cancer patients, I make them to do gallbladder liver flush at least once a month for six times, because I need that six month time period to see the change in their terrain. I don't know what my time is. Uh, so modern medical and dental treatment almost never deals with the reason why these problems exist. While they frequently create new medical problems as side effects of their treatment, we must address the underlying problem. We must think differently. And I mean serious. We must think differently. Rather than we feeling being threatened by it, we're going to actually change the way we're going to practice. Oh, it says I've got five minutes. So I want you thinking about this so acupuncture and acupuncture meridian is an important part of your learning curve that you need to apply that. This is a Dr. Cook slide. Uh, this is from Dr. Cook wants to show this. More than any other health profession, dentists are in the best position to help patients with health problems related to oral cavity. Dentists will be the first care providers in the near future. With their understanding of the tooth and body energy chart, dentists can rule out the oral cavity as a cause of unknown symptoms. He does computerized electrodermal screening tests to check whether make sure that your work is done properly. So many biological dentists, they think they got the job done, but many times it's not done right. Because I know, because I do this electrodermal screening test, and many times I've sent them back again. This is one of the tests he does. You have a 100 patient waiting list. Dr. Vore says 80 to 90% of the systemic problems are caused by influence by the oral cavity. So start thinking uh, dental when the latest medical dental therapy fails. Dentistry need partnership with medical doctors who understand energy medicine. I want to remind you again about hidden dental problems and all those unsuspected dental medical related problems. And I think I'm going to let Flynn talk a few minutes about dental materials. Flynn, would you come on this way?